thanks for staying on with us. We're still with Dato Tang on the Selangor International Business Summit. Dato, uh, there's a lot of conferences that are going to take place for this year's um, International Business Summit. One of them is the Selangor ASEAN Business Conference. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, this conference is a platform or it's a forum we try to create for the ASEAN business to come together to talk about the uh, uh, investment uh, opportunities and challenges in ASEAN. So uh, now we have actually a few uh, important discussions uh, to, to involve. For example, so we have to talk about the uh, opportunities and challenges of the ASEAN economic community. And this is very important because uh, although uh, we, we have uh, established uh, this community, but I think uh, we can further strengthen ourselves, further consolidate ourselves. But we need the uh, uh, participations of all countries from the uh, business community and from the officials. So this is part of it. And the other one important subject is the uh, RCEP. The, uh, Regional Cooperation Economic uh, exactly. uh, Policy. Yes, yeah. this, this, is, this is important. This partnership itself, uh, although they, they have been spearheaded by the ASEAN, but actually it, it has much to achieve from what we've seen. Uh, so perhaps this is the, uh, one of the forums that can actually uh, move towards that direction. We need to be fast because by having RCEP, we'll be uh, able to create uh, the one of the largest uh, uh, economic block or economic community and uh, I think uh, we can this our ASEAN business conference can serve as an important uh, 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 platform for this and uh, thirdly uh, is the uh, the SME how to make our ASEAN SME to prepare uh, to embrace industrial 4.0 and this is an important subject for us because uh, uh, Southeast Asia has become a more and more important manufacturing base uh, for the world. So we need to embrace Industry 4.0. And therefore, by having this conference, uh, we will be able to create a new platform for everyone to come together, put their heads together to see how we can move together forward. Of course, uh, there are other side conferences as well, including the Halal Expo or the Halal yes. Conference. There's also the Malaysia China Entrepreneur Conference. Yes. Plenty of things going on, even yeah. the tea and coffee yes. kind of side project as yes. well. So, as, a, as a, an SME, when they go to um, the Islamic International Business Conference, how best do they split their time when they go to the conference uh, in terms of trying to find the best kind of product or programs that they can go to? How do you think SMEs can? Um, better maximize their uh, opportunities when they go and attend uh, SIPS 2019? We're trying to be comprehensive. But of course, at, at, at this uh, stage, uh, our skill uh, is that we, we have to limit ourselves to, as I said, F&B, you know, uh, to tea and coffee. Th that's yeah. fine. It's, yeah. it's focused. I, I like conferences <laughs> that are co focused yeah. instead of everything, right? Yes, uh, but uh, we, uh, we try to be comprehensive, but at the same time, we must have some depth in, in all the conferences and the sub-conference uh, or sub-forum that we have. So therefore, we, we look at uh, the FMB, we look at the tea and coffee, and then we look at the, the market. For instance, China market is very important. Therefore, we cooperate with the Malaysia China Chamber of Commerce to organize the, the ninth, actually the ninth uh, Malaysia China Entrepreneur uh, Conference. And they have a new event now, Malaysia China Young Entrepreneur Conference. And I think this is important. Not only that we are connecting the existing the, uh, business uh, leaders and business community, we are also uh, preparing ourselves uh, to connect the young entrepreneurs. I think this is our future. We need to, to bring them in and they will look into the different uh, uh, topics which is important and related to the business, uh, including the innovations and, and R&D. I, I think uh, we, this is probably one of the very few uh, summit that have all these features. Of course. Um, the agenda or the greater picture here is that Selangor wants to be the gateway uh, of ASEAN into Malaysia. Already we know Selangor is a powerhouse in terms of contributing to the country's GDP. Majority of Malaysians do live in Selangor even if they work in KL. Do you think that this further reinforces the agenda of making Selangor the gateway of ASEAN into Malaysia? Oh uh, Yes, certainly. And in fact, uh, we have uh, uh, even a uh, la larger goal uh, to make uh, Selangor the uh, global trading hub. So, gateway to ASEAN is our positioning. 
uh, because we, we are already one and we have to strengthen ourselves. And by doing so, we hope that we can achieve the visions of making Slango Global Training Hub in the shortest possible time. And by, uh, as I said, that you know, we need uh, a very comprehensive plan. We need uh, the uh, programs to go toward directions. And uh, we are lucky actually in Slangon, not only that well, we have uh, world-class infrastructure with us, we have uh, all the, the, the best actually, the uh, facility that we have, the, the second largest seaport in Southeast Asia. And, but what is more important is that we have uh, very industrious populations in Slango, and I think we are blessed with the uh, Slangorian and of course people who come uh, all over from Malaysia, from this region to Slango to work it happen. I think being productive is ex extremely crucial, not yes. just for the development of the country, yes. but to keep one's mind actually quite active as well. Yes. Um, so if people want to learn more about this particular conference, um, uh, where can they go to and how much is the fee actually to attend? Oh, well, the fee actually is quite minimum. Uh, because th this is organized government, it's not for uh, profit making. And we also give uh, a special discount to uh, university students, especially the students in the business uh, courses. And also we have corporate tickets and all can be found from our Facebook and from our website. At slangosummit.com. Yes. Of course, that was my conversation with Dr. Teng Chan Kim of Slango. Uh, uh, International Business Summit is an organizing chairman committee there. Of course, he's also an exco member of Invest Selangor. There's plenty of things that you can actually find out more. Just head on to summitslangor.com for more information. If you've missed any part of this interview, just head on to astroawani.com slash notepad. There are plenty of interviews like this, including the one where I was alluding to earlier, my conversation with the CEO of Invest Selangor. Um, you can also watch these kind of interviews on the Astro Awani app, wherever you get the application. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye. Thanks for staying on with us. You are watching Notepad and I'm your host Ibrahim Sani. The conversation for today is of course uh, the Slango International Business Summit that is taking place on October 10th uh, at Mai Tech in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, joining me today is uh, Datuk Teng Chang Kim. Um, he is uh, the uh, chairman of, of the uh, organizing committee of uh, Slango International Business Summit. Uh, Datuk, we've touched on many, many things. I just want to ask why the introduction of the fourth, I guess, pillar or uh, uh, event which is R&D and innovation. How does having this particular pillar help SMEs when they uh, attend uh, the Selang International Business Summit? Uh, well, the world is changing very fast. Business need a lot of innovations. The product need a lot of innovations to further improve, to further upgrade. And therefore, uh, we, we need to connect uh, the industry with innovations. Uh, and we have also a uh, very strong actually, uh, research centre in Malaysia, either in the universities or the private. And we think that we should connect them uh, with the industry itself and also connect, connect them with the government. So it will become actually a, a golden triangle, the ac academia, the uh, industry and the government. Dato, this, the first time I saw this trifecta, is when um, I had to cover a news opportunity in Sweden. Um, and in Sweden, they, they call this the triple helix model, where those three um, came together. Uh, we have the industry um, and academia, and of course, uh, we have the uh, businesses themselves. Um, this would enable businesses to create solutions that the market wants and the market needs. They're not having that crazy scientist model where you know you build something very spectacular but nobody will buy it because nobody has the need for it. And, and, and for the fact that you brought this up, this is the first time I'm hearing that this is happening here in Malaysia. And I'm pretty sure that while the idea is noble, you would need a lot of investment to get it done, right? This is yes. an innovation in R&D centre. Yes. What kind of uh, support from the financial you know, bucket or financial chest um, that uh, the Slum government has earmarked for these kind of endeavours? Yeah. Uh, exactly as I said, we, we, we are lacking in this, you know, a, a, a collaborations of, uh, between the three. So uh, we are looking at actually uh, 
the uh, uh, universities. Mm. Universities are actually are actually in Malaysia, uh, the public universities. They are all actually funded by the federal. They have a lot uh, of innovations. They have a lot of patented product, but they don't have the access to the market. And for in the market, of course, for the big firm, big company, they can afford to have their own R&D center. They, are, they have their own. Mm. But the SME, they do not have this uh, financial support to do that. So uh, they can actually, we, we try to bridge them with the academia, with the universities, either private or, or public universities, so that they will be uh, able to communicate and come up with co collaborations. Of course, the government have to come to, to encourage it, to create a platform. And the uh, expo, the innovations and in the uh, expo is the first platform they create uh, for for them to bridge. This know. is, uh, I guess, in spirit of what uh, the prime minister was trying to say, because Don Mahathir said the government has no business in business, but the government's job is to facilitate yes. and to make sure that all the parties involved can do business most smoothly. Um, and of course, Malaysia is ranked quite highly in terms of the OECD ranking of the ease of doing business. Um, do you think that having this uh, job of bridging parties together um, Again, I'm pretty sure there's going to be friction. It's not, not easy trying to put parties together. Yeah. But these kind of things can be further enhanced by attending uh, the Slango International Business Summit. Do you think that that can happen, this whole bridging of parties? Yes, yes, certainly. Because all this why we are working in silos. The academia, they, they just do their R&D and, and probably they get a patent. But uh, they don't know how to do the part on the commercializations. Whereas the, for the SME, they are looking for new innovations, they are looking for new solutions, and they have no uh, financials, uh, they are not in, in uh, financial uh, positions to do that. So what we do is we bridge them. So uh, as you said correctly, you know, we are the, the role of the government is not only uh, becoming the uh, regulator, but we are also facilitator to bridge the both so that we can build the strength through the collaborations. So, no, so now everyone knows the needs of everyone, you know, mm. and, and we know then uh, with the, the combined strength, then we can do very much better than what we are today. Okay, Dato, we'll take one more short break. When we come back, we'll discuss in detail about the kind of conferences that are going to take place at this year's uh, International Business Summit in Slango. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Notepad and I'm your host Ibrahim Sani. We continue our conversation with the Slango International Business Summit that's going to take place at MyTech um, on October 10th. Uh, and this is an interesting trade show because we want to showcase some of the capabilities within the Invest Slango ecosystem and of course the Slango government at large about what the opportunities can bring towards the SME sector, particularly those that want to tap into the ASEAN market. Joining me is uh, Dato uh, Teng Changke. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time to join us today. Um, we know that this uh, has been going on for a few years um, and uh, this is part of your brainchild to bring more investment into the state of Selangor. Could you share with us uh, some of the historical insights that you have gotten from the Selangor International Business Summits of previous years? Mm. Thank you for having me. Uh, in fact, uh, Selangor, we started with a vision visions of uh, becoming the global trading hub and from there we, we, we have to plan out how to achieve the, our visions. Of course that, was, uh, 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 that is still a very ambitious uh, visions because we are actually competing with other countries in this region. Uh, in order to do that, besides uh, uh, having our usual uh, trade promotions to uh, encourage more investment to come into uh, Malaysia and especially Selangor, so we decided to have a series of programs. So we need to start with something that uh, which is achievable. And, and therefore in 2015, we started with Slango International Expo. And we started it uh, with a general expo, although it's a trade show. And then uh, we decided to uh, concentrate or, or giving a special emphasis to our food and beverages. And therefore, since 2016, it has become uh, FMB and it is still called Slango International Expo. And meanwhile, we need to expand. We need to expand the, the events. And on the second year, uh, we have this uh, 
uh, smart city and digital economy uh, convention, uh, which we bring in e-commerce sectors, we bring in uh, information technology, uh, and on smart city. So these are uh, the team that uh, created for the second year. And on the third year, we decided that look, it has to be further expanded, and therefore we have uh, we brought in Slangor International uh, or Slangor ASEAN Business uh, Conference, and therefore we have three uh, in the third year, and we decided to call it the whole event uh, under umbrella called Slangor International Business Summit. So by then we have three events, and this year we have further expanded. We have uh, now uh, also. Uh, Slangor Innovations and R&D Expo. So it is now further expanded to four events run concurrently and with another four side events which is organised by uh, other NGOs by the uh, Chamber of Commerce but come under umbrella. So we, we are still expanding. This and is this is brilliant, right? Because uh, it has grown from strength to strength. And again, I want to emphasize that uh, this is a trade show. This is a B2B. This is meant for businesses to learn more about how they can expand their own offerings and services. Um, what would be some of the key learnings that you have gotten? Like knowing that the, it has expanded such, yeah. what would be the two or three takeaways that you have definitely learned and said, okay, for 2019, we're going to implement these kind of new learnings? Well, uh, we learn along, along the way we come and we have to set uh, a big target. We have to think big and we have to do big. And therefore, we did not start, uh, we did not start with a, a national uh, expo or a, a, a national conference. Mm. We, we started with international. We, international because we have to set our eyes on, on the international market so that we, we will be able to position ourselves. And, and therefore, we think that, look, how to do it? And, and we had no experience at all then. So we actually combined uh, our effort with the Chamber of Commerce. We, we brought in uh, the Malay Chambers, the Muslim Chambers, the Indian Chambers, the Chinese Chambers, and they become our uh, co-organizers. Uh, and from, from the experience, you know, the, the, all the expo they have attended, they have participated overseas, they brought in the experience for us. Uh, and, and from there, uh, 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 initially, we actually appointed uh, event manager to run for us. And from the event manager, we learned how to run it. So now we have a team, a team uh, that actually specialize in organizing this event. And this is how we pick up from experience of other people. Then we build our own strength. And, and, and now we are still uh, learning, actually, the process. And of course, we team up also uh, for our ASEAN Business uh, Conference. We team up with the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. They are very experienced. They will recommend, uh, recommend speakers to us and also help us to, to uh, look at the team of the uh, uh, conference. So from there, we pick up further experience. So we have built our own team. And I think this is a, a, a fantastic job uh, uh, that we have done in uh, uh, building our own strength so that from uh, a dream of becoming a global trading hub. Now we have actually achieved uh, something that uh, we are proud of, that we are actually having an international event uh, in our own country. And of course, now we are expanding further uh, to attract more participants uh, internationally. So this is how we learn along the way. We will uh, deep dive into the kind of offerings that are currently happening for this year's um, uh, trade show. Uh, but before we jump into that, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the value-added service that you offer for B2Bs attending these conferences. Last week, we spoke to Investor Lango uh, CEO, and he was talking a little bit about uh, business advisory capacity and capabilities. Some of the businesses that go to SIBs of previous years, when they go to other markets in ASEAN, uh, or in Hong Kong, for instance, there are representatives from Invest Lango that come along with these companies and they, they assist these companies in trying to strike new business deals. Do you think that business advisory would be some of the critical features that you're going to expound on moving forward? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, exactly. What we have done is that uh, not only that we are creating our own uh, forum and our own expo, uh, now the new strategy is we also bring our SME overseas. Together. For example, we have been in Hong Kong, we have been in China, and we are going to uh, Indonesia and, and Europe. And by, by doing so, we are not only creating uh, an international uh, platform at our own land, but also we are exploring uh, the world. 
So by doing so, actually we have achieved quite a lot. We have brought our uh, local SME uh, to Hong Kong, especially last year. Uh, we have uh, one of our entrepreneurs has managed to uh, uh, strike a deal of uh, one million ringgit uh, Malaysia by selling sambal, and that is actually unthinkable before that. Yeah, of and course. And also, we have actually uh, successfully brought one of our uh, uh, ca uh, food cattle. You know, they are they are running a hotel restaurant. Now they have actually secured business uh, to the uh, Tokyo Olympics. Uh, they will be catering the halal food for them. And that is an achievement. And uh, from there also, we, we actually learn some skill and knowledge uh, about uh, how to become an advisory to our SME who aspire to expand their business to international market. And I think uh, this, uh, by organizing uh, our own expo, we have uh, actually gained a lot of experience. And we also garnered all the strength to come together. Yeah. Uh, to, to exploring uh, the world. New markets, Yes, right? new markets, yeah. The, the problem with Malaysian um, SMEs is that they are, and if they want to go global, they're competing against uh, international players. Mm. And when you compete against international players, you're competing against problematic issues like countries that are bigger than us, that can do things cheaper, faster, quicker, with more access to markets. So we have to leverage on some of the more, I guess, uh, 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 interesting value proposition that not many markets can bring. So for instance, I thought you alluded to halal market, sambal, that kind of stuff, right? Do you think that that's where the growth opportunities are for SMEs in Malaysia when they want to go overseas? These kind of new areas that no, no other country is touching. Yes, we, we have to look at our strength. There, there's a reason why I talk about we have to look at the international market. Uh, only then we look at our regional market and then look out on our strength so that we know our positions. So we have to correctly and, and, and precisely uh, uh, position ourselves. What can we offer to the world? You know, uh, we, we don't enter into, we, we cannot go into the Red Sea. We have to look at the Blue Ocean. Yeah. So the Blue Ocean strategy is look at our own strength. For example, sambal. I don't think they, in uh, China or Hong Kong, they do sambal. They do make sambal. sambal. And halal food is one of our strength. Uh, and, and for example, our durian, durian product. So we don't just sell raw food durian. Look at how can we produce uh, more uh, product from the durian itself. We look at the coffee. Although we have to import coffee bean uh, from Brazil, but we know how to do the better product from the coffee. And therefore, the, our, for example, three-in-one coffee from Malaysia is very popular in China. That is a huge market. And there are so many uh, actually SME are entering into this market. And besides that, we have so many tropical food produced by Malaysia itself. And we have to look into this. These are things that uh, the outside uh, Malaysia, they, they don't have it. So these are our strengths that need to give special emphasis. The problem uh, or the challenge that SMEs try to uh, overcome is that they don't know how to enter international markets. Yes. They have the goods, they have the people, yes. they have some of the capital or they can at least source the capital but they are somewhat intimidated to go venture overseas, yes. right? And and can be as simple as a market, say, for instance, to Singapore, Indonesia, or Thailand. These are just our neighbouring countries, let alone, you know, far-flung markets, right? Do you think that this is the type of companies that should come to SIBS or Selangor International Business Summit to actually learn how they can enter new markets? Yes, I think this is a place of, uh, probably uh, for their internet exposure. Uh, Selangor International Expo will be the first one for them will be good and it is so economical uh, to actually participate in uh, local uh, expo mm. but with the international ex uh, exposure. Uh, what we need to, to instill into our SME is the spirit of thinking big. Think big and do big. And, and have to tell them, look, Malaysia is a small market. Don't be complacent with the market they have created. The population of Malaysia is only 32 million. Look at at least the ASEAN market, which has 625 million of populations. Look at the whole world, the, the market in, in China, in India, it's huge. In Middle East, for uh, about, about 400 million of populations, India 1.2 uh, billion, China 1.3 billion. These are the markets we have to look at. Uh, even the, uh, the nearest, for example, uh, I would say uh, nearest to ASEAN would be, say, uh, Japan. And, and, and Korea, these are big market, which we have our niche 
and this is a niche market that uh, belongs to us that we can actually expand it. It's interesting that you mentioned, say, for instance, Japan and Korea, because they are not just big in terms of population. Um, we're looking at you know about 100 million people uh, collectively, but they also are a high-income nation where if you do export quality goods, you can actually you know, demand a better selling price because of the capability of this market to actually pay those kind of prices. So it's not just about you know, tapping that 1.3 billion or 1.2 billion markets of China and India. It's also tapping markets that have deep pockets and are able to pay greater selling prices. Do you yes. think that those are another uh, option for us to think yes. about when we talk about SMEs exporting overseas? Yes, exactly. These are the countries which have very high purchasing power. And with a strong purchasing power, we have to look at what we have and they don't have. And this is where we, we can uh, showcase this is a product, uh, but especially food, you know, food and beverages. We have so many types of food in, in Malaysia, a multicultural society. We have actually produced many, many actually, and we have uh, traditional foods, we, which can, if we can, uh, can further improve, do more R&D, you know, uh, this is the things that we need to do. But Malaysians, uh, unfortunately, sometimes that our SME uh, is still uh, worrying about, you know, uh, they're still looking upon subsidies by the governments, you know, uh, to expand business locally. Uh, this is, this is a, a wrong concept, this is a wrong mindset that we need to, to actually set it correct by telling them that, look, the world is not Malaysia, the world is outside Malaysia. Mm. All right, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more about the Selangor International Business Summit that is happening very, very soon. Don't go anywhere.